everyone. Welcome to a godly home. I am still doing my prep cooking for Thanksgiving. And the next thing I'm making is an apple pie. And it comes from this old cookbook. My grandmother gave this to me. And I do believe it was my great grandmother's cookbook. And you can see it's literally disintegrating. It's so old. It used to have a blue cover. And my grandmother tells me that it was a Rebecca's Woman's Lodge cookbook. I keep it in this plastic protector to try to stop it from deteriorating. But this apple pie is the best apple pie that my family has ever had. And I'm excited to make it for you. First of all, I will be using the pastry recipe that's marked awesome. Plain pastry. Sift together one and a half cups full of flour, one teaspoon of salt. Cut one half a cup full of shortening into flour with knife until finely divided. Add gradually sufficient water to make a stiff paste sufficient for one small pie. So we're going to be using that recipe and then down here where it says apple pie and I've marked it best. It says, peel and core moderately tart and ripe apples. Cut them into very thin slices. Fill the under crust and put the original recipe is one cup of white sugar, but I have reduced that to two thirds of a cup or brown sugar over it. Add a little flour dusted over all. Then sprinkle with nutmeg, or cinnamon and dot with bits of butter. Add the upper crust and bake in a moderate oven 45 minutes. Okay, so there's a lot of options with this recipe. And we have made this many times, so I have it down to what is the best combination. When it says a moderate oven, it's talking about cooking on a wood stove where you didn't necessarily know your temperature for sure, but that on a modern stove would be between 350 and 375 degrees. So this is what I did for this recipe. If I'm cooking in a gas stove, I do 350. And if I'm cooking in an electric stove, I do 375. All right, let's get going with this. I will have to substitute the shortening for butter because my husband is allergic to shortening. But if you want to make it with the shortening as the original recipe calls for, it turns out beautifully. Okay, let's get started. I have my sifter and I'm going to add one and a half cups of flour. I'm using unbleached. And the recipe calls for a teaspoon of salt. I'm going to just cut that back because I'm supposed to be on a low sodium diet. So I'm going to do a half a teaspoon. And we'll go ahead and sift that right into the bowl. This pie is so easy to make. People a lot of times get nervous about a homemade pie crust. But the way this recipe is written, enough water to make a paste, that's really the way it is, guys. You just, you need it wet enough to come together. It's not all of these dramatic instructions that we read on these modern recipes. That's why people have given up on making homemade crust, because the recipes make it sound like it's an all-day process. And it's not at all. I'm having a hard time. I use that coarse kosher salt and it doesn't want to go down through my sifter at all. Okay. Now we're going to put in one half a stick of butter. I mean one half a cup of butter, a full stick. You can use the one half a cup of shortening if you want. And another thing about this recipe is there's zero waste. They had it down to exactly what you needed and not a bit more. Okay, just go ahead. 
get that mashed all in with a fork. Okay, then I put my hands in and I just do this. Because you want to get it all fine little particles. You want it very, very mixed together. Okay, that's just nice, powdery, fine little particles at this point. So now I'm just going to start pouring in the water a little bit at a time. Okay, it's trying to come together, but it hasn't completely, so we give it another splash. Okay, right there. It's all come together. Okay, and you'll know when it comes together. Now... So easy, guys. So easy. You watch that. Let me get my recipe out of the way. I don't want to spill all over my old recipe. Okay, let's put about a half a cup of flour right down on the table. Okay, press it once. Flip it. Press it again. Now we want two crusts out of this. So I'm just going to set one aside for just a minute. Okay, here we go. Can you see it, it okay? Yeah. Okay, here's my pie plate. I'm just going to put that crust right into the pie plate. Okay. I'm going to take my scissors 
and I'm going to cut any of the extra off. Okay, now I'm just going to go make sure this is pressed neatly down all the way around the pie here. By doing this, if you have any unlevel imperfections around the edge, it'll just smooth it out evenly. Okay, now we're going to go ahead and roll our next crust before it gets too dried out. And then we'll leave it there while we fill the pie. Okay, that'll be good. Peel and fill this pie. I'm going to use the Cortland apples. They're a little bit tart. Either Cortland or Macintosh is my preference on this. Something tart. You don't want to use Gala, Fuji, Red Delicious, something like that because it's not tart enough. It's going to make a very sicky, sweet, syrupy kind of pie. And you want your pie to be, let me get where you can see me, fill these apples. You want your pie to be tart. And we're just going to cut our apple right off the core. We'll slice it in a minute here. First, we got to get off the core. How many apples you need depends on how big your apples are. I like to junk my apples up, but you can slice them. Okay, I'll be back once I get the apple. Okay, and we're back. Now we're going to put our two-thirds of a cup of brown sugar right on that. And that is packed brown sugar. Pack it tight into your cup. Where it's brown sugar, I gotta kind of get my hands in there and spread it around. All right, that took six of the Cortland apples, just to kind of give you an idea. Okay, and then we're gonna put the nutmeg. That's what I use. I use the brown sugar and the nutmeg, and I'm just gonna do a pin two pinches of nutmeg spread all around just maybe a tiny bit more all around that pie oh my gosh that smells so good that nutmeg and brown sugar gives it that old-fashioned taste you guys are going to be looking for okay then we add on top of that a dusting of flour which helps thicken the uh the uh, filling as it cooks and I'm just using my leftover flour off the table here.
Okay, and then to that, we are going to just slice some butter. Okay, something like so. And then we're going to go ahead and add our crust to the top. Get my apples out of the way. Now I'm just going to go along and cut any long parts off my pie crust here. Okay, now get you out where you can see what's going on. I'm just going to fold it and turn and fold it and turn all the way around this whole pie. Okay, once I got it like that, I'm going to just go along and thumbprint it all the way around, sealing it up. I'm a firm believer that homemade food should taste homemade, and it should also look homemade. The rustic appearance is what states that it's homemade, so don't spend a lot of time trying to get it perfect. Okay? Then I'm going to take my knife and I like to dash it like it's individual pieces of pie. And then when we go to serve it, we can serve it right cutting right on the pre-scored lines. And that gives it plenty of vents. And I'm popping it into the oven. Okay, 375 for a gas uh, electric oven and 350 for a gas oven. And that is what it looks like before it goes in. Okay, guys, I just pulled it from the oven and it smells so good. And it did not boil over in any way. I can show you the sides of the pie. No boiling over because it's vented properly. All right. I hope you guys enjoyed this. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Leave me a comment telling me what kind of pie you're having this Thanksgiving. Bye.